Hey, um, yeah, my name's Dave. Um, I'm going to try to do something a little bit different by uh, doing an SK talk where I don't actually talk about the SK. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So I'm just going to go through a bit of a background uh, as to how I got to a, a point where I considered doing an SK and um, why that was important to me in the first place. Uh, then, then a bit about the preparation for it and um, and then some reflections on on the day itself and, and uh, yeah. So uh, inspiration. Um, I got a lot of inspiration from the people that I come from, um, and uh, and the lives that they've led, the challenges that they've been through, um, the adventures that they've had, um, and that's always been very important to me. And uh, that was something that cropped up again and again on the day. So this is my this is my granddad actually in Egypt, um, and my father. Um, Still is a very good swimmer, but he did a lot of long distance open water swimming um, back in the day of around about 17 miles was, uh, was I think most of the, the, the races they did are thereabouts. Uh, that's in the Lake District in England, but also some in the sea. Um, back, with it, back in the days when wetsuits didn't exist and only goose fat existed. Um, this is my brother who's a, who kind of led me into the outdoors. I, I followed everything that he, every example he set when I was growing up and they, they, set, they stay with me today. Um, very practical, very strong. Um, and so that's him making some steps in an uninhabited part of uh, British Columbia. Um, and that kind of got me into the great outdoors and, uh, and a love of the outdoors, a love of wilderness, and, and then that led to mountains. Um, and my kind of love affair with mountains, I can attribute to two main uh, points in my life. Um, back when I was 17, and uh, I got to a point where I could look across the summit of Mont Blanc, um, the highest peak in, in Europe, and. Uh, and I stared at it for about 10 minutes solid on my own, quietly. Um, and it, that, that, that just stuck with me. It's stuck with me ever since, and it really struck a chord. And because of that, I then um, signed up to an expedition to the Andes a couple of years later. Um, and that was following the path of the, uh, the, the major habitations of the Inca. Um, and at a point there, a friend and I tried to summit Cotopaxi, which is the highest uh, active volcano in the world. Um, and we, we end up turning around just a couple of hundred meters uh, below the summit at 6,000 6, meters. And um, that taught me two things. One, that there was an entire world above the, uh, in the sky, above the rest of us, uh, that I knew nothing about. And, and it was the single greatest moment of my life up until that point. Um, and the other, the other important rule was that uh, I'm very much mortal and that, uh, that the, as, as important as it is to, to pick a good adventure, it's also important to know when to turn around. Um, so that was a really key moment for me. Um, so I moved to New Zealand uh, just over two and a half years ago, um, because of uh, partly because of those interests, and uh, and so pretty quickly set about trying to get to know the back country. Um, and my first job was uh, was cutting tracks, um, cutting and then marking tracks. So uh, we'd spend ten hours a day, ten days straight, have four days off, and back to it. Um, a few of us living in a hut or a bivy. Um, Cutting tracks all over the, the bio tracks all over Carpley Island was my first uh, first job, and then moved, uh, and that was a great uh, a great kind of baptism of fire for the fact that New no point of New Zealand apart from the coast is flat, and most of it's really damn steep and really slippery, um, and so my muscles were wrenched, and to get up at 5:30 every morning and have to do it again was was a learning curve. Um, and after that, we then did a job um, marking new tracks in Abel Tasman for a project down there. And uh, so that was solo. So that would be 10 hours a day on your own uh, bush bashing in the same kind of environment. Um, and that was hard, but wonderful. Um, that's about three hours bush bashing up from, from the main, uh, sort of the nearest track, I guess. Um, and it's, uh, there were some special moments from that. And that stuck with me. The confidence that that gave me stuck with me. Um, and that's probably the the biggest factor I would say in why I enjoyed the SK because I love the backcountry and I'm confident there. It doesn't say it means that I can't make a mistake, but confidence is key. Um, and coming from the UK, it's very much like Wellington, but with more drizzle and less sun. So um, that's on a good day, uh, probably one of the 10 days a year. Um, and then that's on, uh, on an average day. That's Crib Goch in, uh, in Wales. But um, yeah, so that leads on to uh, why, why would I be interested in the SK because it's not just being in that, out in the back country, it's quite specific. Um, for as long as I can really remember, um, I've had a real big thing about wilderness. Um, I couldn't really say where it comes from, I could hypothesize, but, uh, and this, the longer I've gone on, the more I've sort of 
studied biology and ecology and, and that's kind of my working background, um, the more I have a pretty firm belief that our, our makeup as a wild animal is, is, is not even below the skin, it's on the surface and, um, and to connect with that is a really powerful experience and, and it's a drug for me. I, I get more and more inspiration from it the more and more I indulge in it. Um, and when I came to New Zealand and, and, and moved to um, just next to the Tararuas, that, uh, uh, that was then a playground. Um, and, the, and I'm also really in interested in history and the Tararuas has a, has a really, really interesting history. Um, and, uh, and I'm only just scratching the surface at the moment, but the, uh, the, early, the early kind of um, evidence of early crossings by Māori um, and their kind of view of, of the mountains and, and, uh, and then subsequent exploration by, by um, Europeans, uh, named just a couple there that, uh, that I was interested in, um, that really struck with me. And, uh, and then this idea of the uh, Maero, which was, um, as I understand it, uh, kind of the sort of mythical kind of fairy folk um, that lived in the forests, deep into the mountains. But more than that, it seemed to me to be like a, um, an inspiration that came from people who had fled, the, fled into the mountains as a way of um, seeking refuge. And, uh, and that, the idea of seeking refuge in a place like the mountains and therefore becoming wilder as a result struck something in me about why I enjoy those places. So, um, so that's why I mentioned that there. Um, and all in all, it seemed like a, a, a test that I thought would be appropriate. Um, there's lots of tests in life, uh, school and interviews and all those kind of things and they mean something but this meant something else. Um, this was a test that I thought I really, I really appreciated and, um, and when I, we were driving up to, to Putara for the SK and my partner Malena asked me uh, in a roundabout way you know, why it would be important to do this and I said uh, that if I, could, if I could do this then I'd earn my right to be in that place and uh, I could explain that for a long time but, but that was the idea. Um, and from there, from there, I could get um, good guidance, good inspiration from all the people who had gone before, right back as far as 1931. So preparation. It'd um, be hard to talk about preparation without mentioning Kapiti Island. Um, after doing the track cutting, I then worked there as a ranger for some time, and still do it from time to time. And uh, that was about uh, finding the time to do what you need to do. So uh, after a day's work, I would run to the summit, which is the only track on the island. Um, that you could run and uh, so I'd run to the summit and back and that was a really good um, training ground for leaving your back door and going up a steep hill for half an hour um, and then more importantly descending at speed uh, because that scared the hell out of me the first time I did it. Um, so that's really important to me, it's still my favourite run uh, because of the atmosphere of the place um, and from there uh, I, I got confidence to sign up to some races, did much better than I was expecting and then that kind of pushed me into a position where I thought this might something like an SK was possible and that I should, I should give it a go. Um, uh, 14 months of recce's, some of which, uh, well they were all for fun, but some of which were specifically designed because of where the route was on the SK or they provided challenging conditions. Um, uh, so some of them like solo and places that had a bit of reputation so that caused anxiety, all those kind of things to try and replicate the kind of things I thought I might go through on a solo SK. So um, the way I viewed the day itself, what I expected from the day, um, I had this idea, I don't know where it came from, but that the main range of the SK was like a sleeping dragon and I would try and tiptoe my way across it as, as fast as I could and as light as I could try and leave no impression that I'd been there and hopefully I wouldn't wake the beast. So um, this, if I can get it to work, this is what I was hoping for. But for any of those that have read uh, my account of this day, you'll know that's not quite what happened. Um, so uh, 
I'll, I'll leave that for you, the reports there. If you're interested, you can you can read about it. Um, I won't go back over that again. But the uh, my reflections from from that day and some things I took out of it were obviously the weather. Um, the weather was marginal for a long time, got slightly good, and then became terrible. Um, but the the, mo the way that I approached it and what, what was important to me was that um, I would do what I could to pick a good day and then I would try and be as prepared as I could for whatever the mountains would throw at me um, and to get myself in and out. Um, there, I had safety contingencies but the idea was not for other people to have to come and get me. Um, so the weather actually became the key factor um, as to why this, this SK day meant so much to me because the mountains did exactly what I asked of them and they made it, uh, they made it into a typical Tararua day. They didn't make it easy and, um, and I, I felt that I made, met them on their own terms, um, which was a big deal for me. Um, and throughout all of that, um, I kept having this inspiration, uh, memories of being a child, things I'd been told, all coming from my family. And, uh, and that kind of taught me some, some things that I'd forgotten, you know, from, from ways I'd thought about being an adult when I was a child, what I wanted to be, what kind of an adult I wanted to be. And, um, and it was a very emotional experience, a very positive experience. Um, and that, that was something that, uh, that I wasn't expecting. Um, and finally, the support. Uh, there were some guys behind me who were, who were doing a supported challenge. And so there were people I passed all along the way, uh, a lot of whom are here tonight, that had gone a long, long way into those hills um, to support people. And to see so many friends passing through the hills um, in terrible weather, uh, many, many hours into the hills, uh, I found that really inspiring. Um, to see how a group of people can band together to help a friend achieve a goal was, was quite remarkable. Um, and at the end of the day, the SK was only 24 hours. All that prep and all that fun and all those adventures uh, lasted a hell of a lot longer than that. And, um, and it was all really just a good excuse for a lot of fun. So I'll just leave you with that impression. Thanks a lot.